The Nerdcast Empire is on the air. It is Music Monday on the Nerdcast Empire. I am Matt back in the studio once again for another week of the best music releases. And today we are going to be looking at the music releases on as of February the 9th. So the week of February the 9th, those are the releases we will be going through today and telling you what are the best releases for that week in rock and metal. And then we'll be going into the vault a little bit later on to talk about some of the classic albums that we really want to let everybody know about once again i said i am matt in the studio joined as always by mike mike how's it going it's going all right a lot of good music for this week i can't wait to get into it no doubt about that your lists each week as you put these together get longer and longer and it's It's ridiculous it it pretty much is but uh, really a lot of fun to see what great music is out there that we didn't know about that we're learning about each and every week joining us this week in parts unknown is chris chris how's it going going pretty great my inaugural uh, music monday episode so excited for that well somebody who's as big a music fan as 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 we are it's great to have you for this and uh full disclosure chris was going to be joining us in parts known this week actually here in the studio but uh, i've been a little bit under the weather so don't want to risk giving him anything to take home to his kids so uh, he's going to join us from parts unknown again this week but excited to have him along for music monday which is really rapidly becoming one of my favorite episodes we do each and every week. We've only done a couple of them. So really interested to get into the releases of February the 9th. And again, to kind of give full disclosure, Mike has put together a list of releases. They are based off of a website called Loudwire that has the upcoming releases. He also has a couple of YouTube pages. I believe you found another source this week as well to pull some releases from, right? Yeah, the third website, let me pull that up real quick, is actually uh, heavymusichq.com. They have a release calendar as well. It has a lot of the same things as Loudwire, but a lot of different things too. So it's it's like doubled the size of my weekly list. That's crazy. And yeah. It's given us a ton to listen to each and every week. And the goal is for us to pull out the best of the best and we will link to the YouTube playlist that Mike has created in the YouTube version of this podcast. So if you listen to this podcast on YouTube, you'll see a card pop up that says like two nine playlist and you can click on that. You can go through all of them. You'll go through the ones we talk about, the ones we don't talk about. So if your music tastes differ a little bit, you may find something in that list. that's more for you than the ones we tell you about. So that's kind of the goal of this is to spread the word about new music each and every week. We're going to start with Mike, since Mike really makes a lot of the effort of the show go by putting this together. It's only fair that we start out with Mike, and we're going to get your new picks for the week. And again, we could each choose in some weeks three, four, five new ones, but we're going to limit this to two each just to, one, keep the show at a manageable level, but also really kind of spotlight the best of the best of each week. So, Mike, what's your first choice for your new song this week? Yeah, I think I probably flagged maybe a dozen releases for this week that I could have chosen. Uh, A lot of good stuff out there. Pick number one for me is a Spanish power metal band by the name of In Vain with their newest album, Back to Nowhere. Important to note before you kind of talk about In Vain is, as Mike said, they are the Spanish power metal uh, band, not uh, other bands that might be named In Vain, as I found when I was looking through <laughs> to try to set up the social media posts for this. There's a lot of In Vain bands out there, as it turns out. Yeah, at the very least, there is one other, and that's a Norwegian death metal band. I'm sure they may be good. I've not listened to them yet, but maybe I'll, I'll give them a shot and just have some sort of monster in vain playlist of nothing but bands by that name. Well, supposedly they're coming out with a new album in April, so they may show up on a future episode of music Monday. Who Stay knows? tuned. We'll have to Could see. Exciting. Tell us about this in vain. Oh uh, yeah. Like I said, Spanish power metal band, uh, their, their roots kind of date as far back as 2003. This is their sixth studio album. Uh, their debut album didn't come out till 2009 of gods and men. Really great riffing with this band. I, I mean, a lot of the bands on our list are like that. I thought it was interesting. I was kind of looking up different uh, reviews of the album and what people were talking about with it. And uh, there's a website, Dead Rhetoric, and their their explanation of, of the, the the sound of In Vain, I thought really was really fitting. It was they love a lot of early 90s thrash meets mid late 90s power slash traditional influences. Uh, the type that just galvanizes festival hordes. Back to Nowhere provides proof positive that you can be catchy heavy as well as melodic without watering down your sound. And I think that was in case in point with this album. I was going to say the vibe that I got, and I didn't get to listen to the whole album, but what I listened to, if you told me this band was on one of the days of like a Sonic Temple type festival, I would totally believe that because it has that feel. It's something that's 
would be very accessible for any kind of rock and metal fan. I think they're going to be able to get into this band and, and really enjoy their sound. Yeah. And I think talking about the festival hordes, <laughs> I could definitely see this band playing like a Vak in open air and people, you know, chanting along the, the sing songy choruses and whatnot. With this, the album was solid top to bottom, but uh, the title track, Back to Nowhere, uh, The Last Breath of Freedom, Dreaming Awake, Story of a Lie, all worth checking out. And, and the album in general is just really good. Yeah, I, what I've gotten to listen to, I, it's definitely one of those ones that I, I saved that I definitely want to go back and listen to more. Chris, any thoughts on In Vain? I uh, definitely want to check them out. The the In Vain that Mike mentioned and probably as well the, the alternate <laughs> band <Yeah. laughs> uh, both seem kind of up my alley. Yeah, definitely. I think it's it's a group that I definitely want to hear more from. And again, that's the biggest thing about this Music Monday is finding these groups. And some of them have been around a long time that have been putting out music and we're just now discovering them. And that's a really good, really good start. Really good pick as your first album of the week. What is your second album of the week? Oh, uh, yeah. Moving on to the second album. Uh, this was w- one of the first bands that I, I found from that other list I'd mentioned. And uh, it's a band by the name of Metal De Facto. And their newest album, Land of the Rising Sun, Part One. Yeah, it's funny. I, I found their bio at the NordicMetal.net page. And it, like the moment I saw these guys, even before I listened to it, I was like, I think I know what they sound like. And when I listened to them, I wasn't disappointed. It was very much exactly what I expected in a good way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just your exactly what you'd expect out of a power metal sound. It, that, that is what they are. Um a band that formed in 2017, uh, basically kind of a super group of members from other bands who got together saying, hey, we think we can do something greater within the world of power metal. Uh, they even have merchandise with with the slogan of make power metal great again. So if you want to be a part of the m- g- movement, you can you can do that with their merchandise. That's probably a, weird, a real word in in their home language, if I'm guessing. Very well could be. This is their second album. Their first one, Imperium Romanum is based was based on the Roman Empire and that seems to be kind of be what they do is that their their albums are going to center on some sort of historical culture or something to that degree uh this one obviously Land of the Rising Sun part 1 based on feudal Japan samurai culture just really really cool um tracks like Rise of Matarasu Code of the Samurai Heavier Than a Mountain Tame the Steel very power metal sounding titles for sure but really really good songs uh, they got a new vocalist for this album. Great voice. Uh, definitely check them out. Yeah, I mean, my my initial impressions, I wrote, you know, fast but melodic. You know, they play hard, they play fast, but it's got a great sound to it. Really what I like in European metal. Uh, some people who are familiar with the Finnish rock scene may recognize Miko Salavara, who's involved with that group, has been in a few other big Finnish groups. The one that got my attention as far as the name of it was the the band Dimebag Beyond Forever. Yeah, he was involved with. So uh, certainly some influences outside of Finland as well. Chris, your thoughts uh, if you got a chance to listen to this? Yeah, I did get a chance to listen to them. I thought it was interesting uh, between them and another band that was on our list uh, called Lockdown. We had two bands that had uh, samurai inspired artwork for their album covers. So that was pretty interesting to look into um as soon as i heard metal de facto i knew it was going to be something that would be right up yours and mike's alley so i'm not surprised to see it on his list at all that european power metal is uh, it's (laughs) just that yeah and it's this is i think that's my favorite thing about this show so far is there's so many more groups (laughs) in europe and and scandinavia that we're finding out about that really just kind of hit right where my music tastes are as far as metal goes that makes it a lot of fun for sure but two really good choices from uh, another great week in music from mike so we're gonna throw it to chris next and uh, definitely some different choices definitely a couple of groups that sound a little different than the ones that mike chose but again that's why we like having everybody on this podcast because everybody's got a little bit different tastes so chris tell us your first release that you are spotlighting this week on music monday Yeah, the first release for me for my inaugural Music Monday is a band called Red Temple Prey. I wanted to start out local. This is a band from Columbus, Ohio. Um, They have an interesting story, interesting sound. Um, They're right up my alley being more of an alternative rock band as opposed to, I guess, what you would consider a heavy metal band like we usually cover. Uh, Very melancholic as far as the lyric goes. And then they've been described as having a riff heavy sound. It's Kind of a modern take almost, in my opinion, on the late 90s uh, alternative movement. I mean, they, they've been 
tagged as having similarities to Deftone, Smashing Pumpkins, and their their first album here, Can It Get Any Worse? The cover of it reminds me of something that I, I could easily see a band like Filter using it as their cover is what sprang to mind at first. So, But like I mentioned, the, the album's called Can It Get Any Worse? It opens up great. I mean, uh, there's through the songs Big Panic, Before the Bombs Go Off, and Sirens, first three songs, I really couldn't differentiate when one ended and the other began, and I love when a band is able to do that. Personally, my favorite uh, off the album was a song called Bottle Rocket. They add a little bit more angst, just the right amount, into his uh, melancholic vocals, and it, it just hit me just the right way. What I found interesting, I know Mike brought up the heavy music hq i actually managed to find an interview with this band on there and that kind of opened up into their history and it seems like this was a band that almost didn't happen so i'm definitely happy it did uh the singer josh richter stated it it was originally just a side band of him and a couple friends for almost 10 years they played a few shows couldn't get a dedicated drummer they recorded some demo songs never really saw the light of day and they shut it down after years of attempting to restart it like, multiple times. Uh, they almost gave up completely. And then uh, now they're back. They, they recruited a couple, at least one person back into the picture and things just started to click. And now they've got their first major release uh, checking on their Twitter. It looks like they've been touring around locally with another band called Port Stream that I need to check out. So really excited for these guys to finally see their dream come into fruition uh, it kind of speaks a lot to what we're doing and i really they're on my radar i definitely want to go and see one of their shows live with them being close and i'm extremely happy i'm able to plug a local band yeah that's one of those things that as part of this project and even before we got this project going one of the things i've always wanted to do was create some sort of outlet for local bands then and even bands smaller than this one that are in the southern ohio central ohio area that we can really kind of promote them because there really isn't there isn't even a means for some of these big metal bands to get promoted there certainly isn't a means really for smaller bands to get promoted so it's great to to promote this band from columbus ohio and certainly get a chance to check them out i know mike you had a chance to get a little deeper into their album than i did and you some of the things that he said as far as comparisons, I think were things that you brought up when we talked about them earlier. Yeah. Although first I, I have to question, Chris, you mentioned that they were local. I, are you suggesting that parts unknown is somewhere near Columbus, Ohio? Because if, if so, that's news. That's, that's important. It, it may or may not be. I, I can't okay. divulge too much. That was just, that was a little confusing. I had to get some clarity there. Um, yeah, I, I like that interview with heavy music HQ, uh, where they kind of talk about their sound being big riffs and clean vocals. I think, the more we get of that and that that being elevated, I'm, I'm totally for it. Uh, when I was listening to it, I, I kind of felt maybe a little bit of influence from bands like Chevelle and Brand New as well. Yeah, I can definitely hear that. Uh, I would almost lean more toward that than some of the other like Deftones and Smashing Pumpkins that people have brought up. That guitar sound was very Chevelle-ish at times, I believe. And, and the vocal delivery kind of had a brand new flavor to it. That, that was what I got out of it. But uh. Yeah, Before the Bombs Go Off, really cool song. Definitely something to check out. I know you mentioned their clean vocals in that, in that interview. Uh, he actually mentioned that he was kind of self-conscious about cl- like clean singing. So I'm, I'm definitely glad that he did. He's got an amazing voice. I guess a lot of his music endeavors have been more extreme. And he mentioned, you know, it's easy for him to sing really loud and rough because that's kind of what's expected of him in a an area like that. But yeah, I think he did a great job and definitely no reason to be self-conscious about it anymore. No, not at all. And I think also when they talk about how they, they've kind of done this for a long time, but it never really took off. And now they're kind of, they have this new kind of reinvestment in it. I, I think that's that's kind of a common sentiment amongst people, especially when you're talking maybe late 30s, early 40s people who maybe put their dreams aside. And, and as the last few years have unrolled, you kind of like pick those back up again, thinking, you know, life short, like we might as well do something we want to do. Yeah. Kind of really describes this whole project, to be honest with you, that, you know, we're doing that same sort of thing. And hopefully we can maybe cross paths with those guys at some point. It'd be great to do an interview and maybe feature some of their music as well on our channel. So certainly stay tuned for that potentially in the future. Chris, you've got another pick for your new releases of this week. What was number two for you? Yeah, this was kind of a fun counterbalance of genres. Uh, Don't have as much information on this band. Uh, They're a band called Oriole from Portland, Oregon, Uh, been active since 2013, and they have just released a new album called, 
let me make sure I get this right. A Lunarian Bellmaster. Considered black metal or uh, just just dark metal in general. I don't really t- find myself listening to this genre much, but when they popped up on the list, I gave them a chance and I was actually very impressed. Um, they're described as having kind of a spacey, almost cosmic theme and sound to them, and they they fit that. That's right up my alley. I'm a, I'm a big fan of anything spacey, you know, David Bowie type topics. So listening to them and the kind of growling vocals that kind of turn me off from this genre most of the time, they do such a great job of layering them in the background to where for the longest time listening to the opening tracks, I almost didn't realize they were there and I got to just focus on their riffs, which are amazing in their own right. Um, If I had to suggest songs off of this album, I would just say start it from beginning to end because much like the opening to uh, Red Temple Praise album, they, it's very hard to like differentiate between the ending of one song and the beginning of another. I love that. So start at the beginning, go all the way through to the end. If I had to suggest anything. So this is another band that you have to kind of search to find these guys on social media because there are some other bands with that same name, believe it or not. I do have to read the intro to their band off of their Facebook page, which says Ariel is an entity to address the cosmos, which Citadel Alunar travels. I don't know what any of that means, to be honest with you, but I believe it. I don't want to know what it means, though. It sounds pretty scary, to be honest, but I'll be honest, like this type of sound is not really something I'm I'm totally into. But again, as, as Mike and I have talked about, when we've listened to some of these groups. Sometimes I can hear something and recognize that it's probably not something I would listen to, but I feel like there is an audience out there for this and what they do. They do it really well. And I think that's the best way I can describe this. I feel like people that are in this type of music are really going to dig this. Mike, your thoughts. Yeah. I I'm always a fan of when people kind of think outside the box and, and have a different mission for what their music is trying to accomplish. And that's definitely the case with these guys. Uh, the word that came to mind and I ended up seeing it also on uh, one or two of their band camp pages was atmospheric. That, that is what their music sounds to me. Like it's just, it's, it's not, these aren't individual tracks or songs. It's, it's almost a mood of being projected audibly. It's, it's, it's something to check out even if you're not into it, just to experience it. I think. Yeah, I would hundred percent agree with that. Mood is a good way to describe it. It is definitely different, but I, I appreciate it. And again, this is why I like having Chris on with us on music Mondays, because sometimes Mike and I have very overlapping metal tastes. And this was definitely something that was a little more outside of what I typically listen to, but I, I think you described it well, that I think this is, this is really interesting. And that's, I like it when the music is interesting, when it's something different. I think that that makes for uh, a fun listen, even if it's not something that you traditionally would listen to, but yeah, that's uh, that's number two on Chris's list for this week. Now we'll get to my choices. And as soon as I heard the first one, I think first off, everybody else on, on discord knew that I was going to pick this one. And when you hear it, it's like, okay, that's pretty much right up your alley for what you listen to. Uh, it's a band by the name of Revolution Saints, and the, uh, the album title is Against the Winds. Just really good stuff for, like, classic rock. Dean Krasternovo is the lead singer of this group. Of course, he's also the drummer, has been known for working with a ton of bands over the years, and, and most notably Journey uh, in recent years, but also with Bad English and Hardline over the years. He's really talented, and this is really his first opportunity uh, on a full album scale to be out in front of a band and be able to be the lead singer. And the music is really, really good uh, songs. I would recommend checking out or against the winds. It's the title track. It definitely is a classic journey sound uh, changing my mind. It's a slower rock song, but still really good sound and fall on my knees. Uh, another really good one. Definitely a, a different pace to that one as well. They, they just sound like classic journey. If you're comparing it to their non pop stuff the stuff that maybe wasn't their big monster hits but really like the supporting rock tracks that they had have on their albums uh again great to have dean castronovo up top for this one to, to be the lead singer his, his voice is really good and i know he's getting ready to go back on tour with journey as their drummer and, and backing vocalist but overall if you like classic rock from the the mid 80s if you like journey i think you're gonna dig this album 
the record label in question that releases this frontiers music they, they seem to specialize in this kind of sound almost as if they got together and said hey we need a roster of bands that we can produce hits from for the year 1988 with and and if this were still a world where mainstream guitar rock mattered and the hits mattered i, I think they would be churning out just multi-platinum albums perpetually it's it's really clean good sounding stuff i you know not much else i can say about it yeah it was definitely one that is right up my alley chris your thoughts on them I, it's exactly what you expect from a group that has guys that have worked with journey white snake dio night ranger i mean it's that classic rock sound and it it just helps to remind me that there are still people that are putting out this sound on a regular basis and how they went under my radar. I'll never know, but they're definitely on there now and they're staying there. The other one is Takeda with the album, the agony flame uh, Takeda was interesting off their Wikipedia page. Swedish rock band comes from the Japanese anime series, silver Fang, uh, where Takeda's name was mispronounced as Takeda in the Swedish dub of the anime series. So that's how their name came about. But this band has been around since 1999. It's another one that I don't know how I've missed out on them all these years, but they've got a really great sound. You look at uh, some of the stuff they've got going on. Uh, the third strike, really good. Uh, on the line has a more of an alternative rock sound, something you would hear in, in the late nineties. I think uh, your blood awaits you a much slower, softer rock song, uh, kind of an interesting change of pace song. that sounds kind of different than the other stuff going on. Uh, it was just really good. I, and I looked at some of the reviews on it. And reviewers are kind of calling this their darkest album ever. I think maybe with their new record label, they're, they're going a little heavier than they have in the past, but the, the videos kind of weird. It's got some weird AI stuff going on for the third strike, but otherwise like it's really, really solid. Uh, again, another band that's been around for a while and I definitely want to check out more of their stuff. Yeah. It's, it's funny. I, maybe I need to look into them a little more deeply because to me, in that one video specifically that I pulled for the, for my playlist, there was dark imagery, but there was really nothing to me about the sound that said dark. It, it just did not super heavy stuff. Very melodic. I, I'd be anxious to hear both the rest of the album, which I haven't had a chance to really get into yet. And then their earlier material to make that comparison. But again, another band that's been around way too long for me to have not have heard of them until recently. Yeah. No question about that. Chris, your thoughts on Takeda. Yeah, I didn't know the backstory and its ties to anime, so that was that was interesting. Uh, I this I think this was the last band from our playlist that I added to my definitely need to give a re listen. So they were really close to making my list as well. Uh, I think what stuck out to me most was the vocals from Robert Peterson, uh, amazing voice. And yeah, I'm with you guys. Everybody needs to check this band out. I do have to say one more thing. It, it It's funny when you consider <laughs> what, where their name came from. It would be the equivalent of us just taking some random Shonen Jump anime that was poorly localized and then stealing something from one of those localization changes and making that the name of our band. That's just it's kind of funny. I mean, <laughs> we, we could have named it like like Yurameshi. Yeah. Like from the. Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, although the dub is great, there are definitely some Japanese words in that dub that, that were not handled very well. I feel like you almost have to in today's day and age with the amount of band names that are already taken. That's I mean, true. We've already covered, covered a couple that have uh, other bands that have their same name. Yeah, it's a challenge to find something new for sure, as I can attest to when we were coming up with a name for this podcast, that there's some challenges there as well, but... We're going to step aside for a quick break. We come back. We're going to go into the vault. We're going to tell you a classic album you need to check out as we wrap up this week's edition of Music Monday on the other side of this time out here on the Nerdcast Empire. Back on the Nerdcast Empire Music Monday, Matt, Mike, and Chris with you. Don't forget to check out our website, nerdcastempire.com. You can see all of our podcasts there. You can also check out our store at nerdcastempire.com slash store. We've had quite a few orders on there. We really appreciate that, of course. And certainly you can check that out. Get your Nerdcast Empire merch. You can reach out to us on social media. I believe there's even a contact form on our website where we've received a couple of messages. So make sure you reach out to us and let us know what you want to hear on Music Mondays here on the Nerdcast Empire. We're going to get to the vault now and we'll let Chris go first this time in the vault. And uh, certainly some really good choices from everybody this week. Chris, what is your choice from the vault this week? Yeah, for my first entry on the vault, I wanted to pick something that's had big meaning to me 
Uh, it's a more popular album that most people are going to know, even folks that aren't necessarily going to listen to our podcast. And that's the car self-titled album. Whenever I hear new wave or someone's talking to me about new wave, I know a lot of people will think about the talking heads or Duran Duran, but the cars is where I go to. Um, I didn't get to grow up with them. Obviously this album being from 78 and their initial album, but I did listen to them. Uh, my mom listened to the cars. Almost everybody I knew listens to the cars to this day. Uh, I can remember my high school, uh, history teacher, Mr. Blevins playing this in class. So props to Mr. Blevins for helping increase my love of the cars and Even during college, I had a rock and roll history course and we had to write a a full report. We had a list of songs or albums that were given to us and we had to pick one that defined their decade and explain why it defined their decade. And I went with this album. So this has a lot of history for me. It's got that classic new wave sound, heavy synthesizers, synth rock, power pop, lots of technology behind this one, even for its time. Most people are going to know the the good to- good times roll. My best friend's girl, just what I needed. I mean, it's it's loaded with hit singles that were played on the air and are still played on the air to this day. And side two almost outdoes side one. Uh, You're all I've got tonight. Bye bye love. Moving in stereo, which is my personal favorite. It's one of those albums that's rare to me, and that from front to back, I love every single song. And I don't find that with a lot of albums. And when I do, I absolutely love it. Yeah, the Cars are a really great band from that time. This album was released in June of 1978, so it actually predates everybody on this panel, and that's uh, uh, something that may be rare sometimes even in our trips to the vault. But uh, Rico Kasich is a, a classic lead singer of the 80s, and, and you hear his sound, and it's so very unique. But they feel like some of those other big bands from the eighties. When you think of bands or even late seventies, I guess maybe more appropriate your bands, like your Boston's and Kansas, where they all had these unique things that they did that made them almost instantly recognizable, made them unique, but also just, they made their sounds so, so enjoyable to listen to. And, and, and obviously this is a really great album. Definitely encourage everybody to check this out. As Chris said, the hits are big. Everybody's heard the hits if you've listened to any kind of classic rock radio, but it's the the lesser known tracks on there that really make this one stand out. And uh, it's a a really good It peaked at number 18 on the U.S. Billboard 200. And uh, again, that was at a time where disco was still kind of holding on to the Billboard 200. So the fact that this one got up to number 18 uh, certainly says a lot about the the popularity of it uh, as well as the quality of it mike your thoughts yeah i think i saw this went six times platinum (laughs) so not bad for your first effort by any means um definitely one i need to go back and actually listen to front to back i've uh, admittedly have not done that um but yeah the hits are great uh you're all i got tonight is an all-time classic song just no matter who the band is so yeah definitely definitely a good choice yeah absolutely that's a great first entry into the vault from chris and Definitely one that everybody should check out. We're going to move on to Mike's trip to the vault. And uh, Mike has, as we talked about on Music Monday, such an extensive CD collection that really there's so many different directions you can go. You've picked a really good one uh, this week, as always. But what is your choice from the vault this week? Well, you know, we were having a discussion about picking a vault choice for this week. And I was trying to think of some sort of way to to structure this or, or or delimit it to some degree and i was thinking maybe just start at the letter a and just kind of move through the alphabet week by week so uh with that in mind my choice for this week is the fourth album from the brazilian power metal band angra and this album is rebirth angra i've heard only because you have listened to angra and i've had a chance and really like their sound you want to talk about this one but uh, not just this album but a lot of their stuff just really really good stuff yeah and this is kind of an interesting album uh but like i said it was their fourth album uh, the lineup had just gone through a major shakeup, with pretty much only the two guitarists being the mainstays at that point uh, rafael bittencourt and kiko Loreiro, who was also most recently known from megadeth which he just left a few months back from there. Kind of interesting to see if he ends up back in Angra full time. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, one of the big changes, too, with with that lineup changing was the replacement of the lead singer, Andre Matos, who, if you listen to their earlier work, tremendous singer. He did stuff with Avantasia, I believe, too. Just great voice. Unfortunately, passed away in 2019. 
But yeah, I've just tremendous album front to back. Uh, definitely check out the songs Nova Era, Acid Rain, Unholy Wars, Running Alone. As far as this band goes, it's another one of those bands I kind of just discovered through the streaming services. Probably some sort of Ed Guy radio station or Sonata Arctica radio station. But I, I kind of picked up them up like right as Kiko was about to leave. So kind of cool that that I knew who he was when he joined Megadeth. Even I encourage anyone to check out any of their albums. Uh, specifically, this one is is really great. Yeah, haven't had a chance to listen to them yet. But as far as power metal goes, I know before we did this, I hadn't really gotten into that genre but every single one that mike has sent me i've listened to and love so i'm gonna trust them again on this one and check them out i'm sure they're gonna be right up my alley especially when they're compared to such bands as halloween queens reich and iron maiden so yeah it's definitely a good combination of bands to to be compared to for sure so definitely check out anger any of their stuff but rebirth specifically with mike is spotlighting this week our last entry of the week our last trip to the vault is mine and i decided to go with a tribute album in my trip to the vault. And this is a tribute to the band, the Japanese rock band, Siam shade, who I think currently is not active. They did reactivate for a short period of time. I don't think they're still active, but a really good Japanese group that everybody should check out. There was an English tribute album, which kind of surprised both Mike and I, when we heard it back in 2010, but it's mostly English covers of some of their biggest songs Uh, One thing I want to point out on that is Janie Lane does a cover of one third pure hearted emotions. Uh, Sadly, that was one of the last releases that Janie Lane had the former warrant lead singer before his untimely death in 2011. Uh, So always kind of sad when I, when I hear that cover and think about that, but other great tracks, Sebastian Bach did a cover of don't tell lies, which is the opening track did really did a good job with that thing about Siam Shade is there was already enough English in some of their songs that you could basically just sing the Siam Shade version of that. George Lynch also did a great cover of Triptych, one of the instrumental tracks that Siam Shade has. We'll almost certainly talk about Siam Shade again on this podcast or one of our podcasts because a really good hard rock band and one I'm just dying to get back together and tour so that I could actually see them live. But as far as tribute albums, especially ones in English, I thought they really did a great job on this. Yeah, I I really wish this was a formula that you would see more often with, you know, your hair, pop, you know, pop metal artists contributing to Japanese rock band tributes. I think that's that's a really cool thing. Some of the names involved are just just ridiculous. Uh, you know, I was looking up a little more on Janie Lane because that that stuck out to me like, man, he, he couldn't have been alive much longer after this came out. Uh, kind of off topic, but kind of sad in a way that I guess they were going to be making a biopic on him called cherry pie guy, which I just feels kind of disrespectful given what he, what his feelings were toward that song. Yeah. I mean, he hated that song. I think they all did, but they knew it was going to be a big hit. So you can't not record it. But you mentioned some of the other names, uh, crazy names as Richie Kotzen, Eric Martin, John Karabi, Mark Slaughter, Mark Slaughter, like great stuff for sure to check that out. And, uh, I know I haven't had given Chris a chance to check that out, but certainly encourage you to check that out if you get a chance, Chris. Yeah, I am at least aware of uh, one third pure heart emotion just from pension. So always fun when our metal tastes mix in with our anime tastes. And also interesting to see the crossover from some of these American bands with, you know, Japanese lyrics. So it's amazing. Yeah, definitely want to let everybody know about that. Siam Shade is great. And again, a band we'll certainly talk about more on this podcast. That is going to wrap things up for Music Mondays, and it's been another really good episode. We are continuing to span the globe to find the latest in rock and metal music, and we'll bring you the best of it each and every Monday here on the Nerdcast Empire. Big thanks to the entire crew, Mike and Chris, joining me this week. Big thanks to Stove Lake Media for all their continued support of our podcast. Next week, we've got more podcast goodness on Sunday. We'll have our weekly edition of the Nerdcast Empire and then another Music Monday coming your way in just seven days as we will be reviewing the releases on February 16th. So the releases the week of February 16th, we'll be talking about our choices for that coming up next week on the Nerdcast Empire. That wraps things up for Music Mondays for the entire crew on that saying so long. Don't forget to join the Empire, the Nerdcast Empire.